y'all, and welcome back. I've got a very metal review for you all today. I've got four figures here from Archcore, made by Toy Alliance. Now, this review is brought to you by The Show Z Store. Now, this is the most metal figure I think I've seen all year, and I wanted to actually do a heavy metal version of review where I scream and sing and do stuff in metal. But it turns out two things. One, it's really hard in the voice, and I'm paying for it now. And two, I'm not that great of a metal singer, so uh, I'm going to save you guys' ears. I'm not going to sing as much as I can help it. But anyway, we got four figures here, and actually two of them are the same because there is a black version and a white version, and I thought it was more metal to have two black arms. And I actually have a video that I posted earlier on how to convert one of the arms to a right arm so you can actually use two of the same color. So check that video out in the link above. So anyway, we've got Wolf Recky. It's got a cool illustration of a guy riding a mechanical wolf. Here's the back. Then we have the Berserker armor, which has got this epic image here, which we'll get to later, explaining what's actually going to happen when you combine all these sets. But in the back, we've got photos of this semi-truck mode where it pulls a trailer. These turn into armament, like, tank-type vehicles. And then we have Frostlight here, which is the core figure. And uh, it's a pretty good illustration. It's a little bit on the soft side. I almost thought it was a registration issue at first, but everything else is in sharp focus. So I would say it's just the way they painted it. It's a little bit on the soft side. On the side, we have this awesome photograph of what it's supposed to look like. And then, of course, stuff on the back that shows you what all it does. So let's get this guy out of the package and see if it's worthy of our collection. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the figure that comes with this. Both wolves come with a figure. And the only benefit for me of gotten the white one as well as the black one is I would have gotten two different minifigures. Unfortunately, I've got two of the same, but I might make a helmet to make him be a little bit different. For size comparison, here is a Gears of War Mega Bloks figure. And as you can see, there is so much detail going on in such a small figure. There's articulation and these awesome armor like. We've got, it's, it's bulky. It's really bulky. He's a big boy, and he's not going to be able to do a whole lot of movement without you finagling things. But he still has plenty of joints and shoulders and arms and biceps, hips, and everything. You will have to sort of mess with things to get him to stand. But in addition to just being this awesome figure, he comes with weapons. We've got a rocket launcher. We've got this gnarly axe. And we also have a few other accessories like hands and stuff like that to add to it. But he comes with the car. And if you pop off the cape and you open the hatch, my hatch just popped right off. I guess you pull by this peg instead. There is a seat inside where you can pop this guy in. So it's, it's cool that you get multiple kinds of playability and posability with even the vehicle mode. Let's see if I can get that in there just right. Now this this door is very stiff. There we go. Got him in all the way. You can close this door. There, pop that back on. So don't don't lift by that. Lift by the tab that's here. But now you can see we have the wolf in vehicle mode. It looks pretty good. We've got the paws up here. The one that stands out is you do have a wolf head coming out the back, but that's definitely going to be intimidating for anyone chasing this. This can play into the lore, I'm sure. The roof line really has this vibe of classic, like, 1920s cars, uh, high-end stuff, but also it kind of works with this whole steampunk vibe we've got going on. We've got the engine exposed, little mechanical details worked in there. We've got the headers coming out exhaust with the exhaust coming out to the side. We also have exhaust coming out the rear, spikes, paint finish is excellent. And like I said, I have another video up where I show how to convert this into a right hand if you want to use two of the same. Should work for the White Wolf as well, as well as the exclusive that's coming out uh, that was supposed to be at BotCon earlier this year. But once we get to this guy, what really drew me to this, if you're familiar with Road Blasters, just Let's fix that. There we go. Feel a little bit more forced to get that pushed down. But if you're familiar with Road Blasters, it was a video game in the 80s, and Matchbox made a line, and there was one vehicle called Toe Nailer, which was a semi-truck tow truck 
This has vibes of that. And I actually did a Photoshop, you can see here, of what I think this could look like if they had repainted it as a Road Blasters toe nailer variant. We would just need a toe hitch on the back. And uh, I definitely would get a second one if I could get that as an option. Now, one thing I will note about this vehicle mode that I like and I don't like. The thing I don't like, and this, this might go back to my shoulder joints that we have here where I'm kind of, they're kind of a little flex in them. I'm having a very hard time getting these wheel wells of the front of the vehicle to be straight up. Now I can mess with it and tilt this to make it, but I think this is supposed to be completely straight and these are supposed to turn up. So I'm trying to avoid putting any excessive force on there. I'm actually going to look at it closer and I might need to reach out to Toy Alliance, but we'll see how that goes. But what I do really, really like is that it incorporates the weapon storage in here. So we have the shield, which just slides on with that. We have the two knives back here. But the coolest part is you have this big chunky hammer, which normally on a transformer or something might have a hard place putting it somewhere because there'll be no storage a lot of times. This is incorporated into the transformation. So this is what locks the legs together, which is just a nice plus. But the vehicle has lots of heft, just like the robot because it's full of die cast. It looks pretty good. I really like the paint quality, the aesthetic. But yeah, the, the tabbing process, the transformation is pretty good. But it does take a bit of work, especially in the cab area. And like you can see here, it holds together okay for the most part, but things can pop loose as you mess with them. It, it's more display than, than full around as far as toys go. But there's one epic thing we need to pull in here to really show off what this is all about. Now, to see if we can get this all in here, we have this. So we have a trailer. I guess before I snap it on, I should show you guys the details. This is this large hunk of plastic. We have fabric here with this really nice painted detail. We have almost like a little steering section up here for a assistant pilot. We've got rubber treads that move on here. All this nice detail, almost like this is powered as well. Like you have an engine inside and you have exhaust back here and thrusters. All this detail is gorgeous. Lots of nice mechanical bits. And as far as the hitch goes, we have this rotating hitch here, which will just peg in to the two tabs on the back. Now let's see if I can get this lined up the first try. There we go. So we have that locked in there. So you can have the truck in turn positions, which I'm going to do just so we can fit everything in here. We can have our Wolf Frecky on the side. And of course, if you have a second one, you can do that as well. And this vehicle is actually meant to haul these things, which you could put a pilot in as well. We have little pegs down there. We have these really, you know, even though everything has sort of got the steampunk modern vibe on parts of it, other parts of it are kind of old looking. So we have this cannon that's sort of reminiscent of something of an older cannon, but it has mechanisms in here, like an artillery, more of it that's modern design. We have rockets back here, which you could imagine are either like a rocket pack itself or shells that would be loaded into this cannon. But they are also on moving treads, nice detail for the tracks. Like everything is painted so well, even if some of the parts might not clip perfectly. And I'm sure if you spend enough time with it, you could probably get it clipped just right. But the visual details and on display looks great. But you can fit both of them up here. And if you wanted to mess around, you can, you know, fit a car up here and that as well. You could have the pilots assorted on here. Just as is, this vehicle is really cool. But the combination of, you know, Viking, Mad Max, heavy metal, metallic, robots, modern, future steampunk. Like, there's so much mishmash in here. Visually, it's very interesting. It's very cool. Something that might tear on 80s or 90s extreme styling, which is almost over the top, at the same time is endearing and kind of holds up because it's like, it's embracing the absurdity of it and making it something that's just awesome. Uh, thing in the sense of like Gurren Logan or something like that, where it's absurd, but at the same time, it's epic and you can love it. Now, before we go on, I do want to talk a little bit more about Frecky here. He has an alt mode, which is a wolf. And the transformation is actually pretty simple. And it looks really good. I, I think that the posing is good. There's not a whole lot involved in it, but we still maintain all 
all this mechanical detail back here. We've got the intake for the engine. You can see the intake headers, the exhaust manifold. The paint is excellent. The mouth even opens. Considering the head splits in half, it's actually really impressive that the mouth can still open even in doing that. But the back here, we've got the tail extends out. Like, there's so much thought out. We have, you know, these other ports. They almost look like they could be uh, throttle body intakes or something. I don't know. But there's all these cool mechanical details that really work together to make this as well interesting. And it even works in respect to being a vehicle because you could have one driving and one running. And they all kind of go in hand in hand. But this part to display is pretty big, takes up a lot of space. But let's go ahead and get all this into robot mode and see how that portion stacks up. Now, as far as a robot goes, even in his base mode, he looks really good. The details look really nice. It is a hefty figure. And we have a cool few accessories. We've got two small knives, which are kind of uh, minuscule compared to the way the rest of this thing's set up, but it's still a cool addition to have. We have a shield, which uses a system where it slides on to the forearm and is held with the hand. And then we have this really awesome looking hammer. But as far as the figure goes, we've got lots of articulation. So we have this nice metal frame in here and the rest seems to be really high quality plastic. You can actually see the ratchet joint on the outside. And then we have this other joint that moves up. Now, the one thing I do notice, and this is something that kind of concerns me, is that when you lift up on the shoulder, that joint separates. And so I don't know how strong that is, so I push in and click up. I think, even though nothing's broken on me yet, I think that's the safe way to approach this. We also have rotation in here on the shoulder that uses the axle for the wheel. Patient the bicep. We have elbow, but we also have this sort of forearm bend to help with a little bit more dynamic of the pose. Rotation at the wrist. We have multiple, we have three fingers here. We have the trigger finger here, and we have the thumb. We have waist rotation. Rotation at the hip, and that's on the inside of the hip, but then we also have a joint there, and you can see all the nice metal rotation here at the hip. You can see some inner piston workings. It's really cool. Then as far as the knee goes, turn the knee, go to joint there, and then ankle, we have tilt, and forward and back. It's all very tight. So that's, th these are nice, strong joints. But like I said, I would be careful on this one, and I don't know if it's because this is a new release, but as I can see in here, I have access to the screw, and the screw itself actually looks like it could be a little bit loose. So we can see in here, you see how there's movement? So what I may do is go in there and tighten that screw up just so I feel more secure. That might actually make it harder to rotate that because that will tighten that ratchet, but I might mess with that some just because I don't want to break this guy. And there may not be an issue, but I am just kind of overcautious with these expensive toys. So let's see, do we have any tilt? Don't feel any tilt in there. But there is sort of some, some screws. I think that's just for the transformation. We have ball joint at the neck. We have a lot of movement there. Very emotive. Can't literally look down much, but we can look up a lot. We have this cool guard here that kind of blocks the face anyway. So if you want to find some, some cool poses, you got to kind of work around that anyway. Visually, back looks really good. I mean, this is this alone, I don't think photos do this figure justice because when I first saw it, I'm like, okay, well, this looks pretty cool. I'm, I'm in here for the combined mode, which we'll see here shortly. Uh, but I thought the arms felt a little bit uh, small compared to the rest of it. But in person, no, it's not. I, don't, I just don't think photos do this guy justice. The paint is awesome. It, the weight is awesome. Everything feels awesome. The only thing, shoulder joints. We're going to keep an eye on that. So we'll see how that goes. Now, some of the things I really appreciate about the design, we do have this sort of Viking theme where we have the, the Thor hammer, and we have the horns, like from the helmet, we have the beard and all that. But what I also find interesting is we sort of have feet that are a little bit hooven looking at first. So he kind of also pulls back to almost like a monster or demonic kind of being as well. So 
I think all these cues, all these visual things, the different types of painting where we've added in different color and sort of broken up just a single color scheme, it has sort of this vibe of painted quickly for battle. I think they've really, really pulled off a very interesting look for this character. And for size comparison, here he is with MP10. As far as size goes, he really fits in with the MP Transformer class. And here's the whole crew. So we have Frostlight here in robot mode with the soldier at the bottom. We have our wolf vehicle mode, our wolf mode. We have one of our tank armaments on the back and on the trailer and the trailer in the background. This is shaping up to be an epic team. Now there's one final configuration, which is what I really wanted this for. I'm so impressed at how everything just comes apart and creates the components that it's gonna lead up to for the final armor. We've got the vehicles, the little armament vehicles, they break down into being feet. We have parts from underneath the trailer that's gonna be a new crotch and chest plate. We have rockets, we have shoulder pads, we have giant chainsaw weapons that came from the tracks. The trailer itself converts into this giant axe, which the bottom, I appreciate they've incorporated a stand into it. There is so much going on here. There's a backpack, there's shoulders, there's these giant fists. Now it's time to combine this guy. So th first things first, let's go ahead and do the feet. The feet come back. Let's go forward. So we have this sort of hooven look. And that will allow us to combine this slot and this slot to form the leg. There we go. And these parts will just fold up. And with both legs in place, we just press both these bits into the knees. There's a single slot. Then there's a peg that allows these rockets to go on and expand on the hips. And then we have two slots to slide in the new crotch piece. And then we have the chest piece that slides on and snaps in like so. And now for the shoulders. So we slide this on to the back first. And then they just close. And the other side the same. I, I like this one on this side because we get the little decal over there. And then the backpack, we have these two pegs here, and then we have a little slot thing here. And this actually serves additional purposes as well, which is pretty cool. There, we've got this boy bulked up. Now, lastly, the arms. And for the arms, I like to tilt these out, and then we work them on, which is easier said than done. Okay, so they go on the slot, and then you can get the hand in there you may have to mess with some. And then we have this big boy transformed. And this is this is why I wanted this. This thing is so chunky and epic looking. And of course, I've got the symmetrical hands here. 
rather than having a white one on the right side, just because I thought it was a little bit more cohesive looking. But yeah, this guy is epic looking. And on top of that, he has these two giant chainsaws he can wield. And they have pegs here that allows you to place them on the back for storage. And you actually can place the shield and stuff on storage as well, which goes onto his axe. I just don't like the look of it on the axe. We do want to cover the articulation in this mode. So it does retain some of what it had. We have the shoulders, some nice ratchets in there, of course. You can go out a little bit to the side, but you're going to have some collision with stuff. Head stays the same. We can move the bicep, but you do have to watch for collision in there. You have rotation at the new wrist. Of course, each of these fingers has articulation within each one. The legs retain their articulation, but mostly just for adjusting your stance because there's so much weight going on here. I really don't believe you can do a whole lot. You could probably use the, the chainsaws of the backpack or something to help act as a tripod, and you might be able to get a few poses out of it. But as far as display articulation, you don't have a ton, but you can get enough dynamic and cool poses out of it to really look good enough on the display. Is it worth it? And so here we have the final configuration. I think it's awesome. I really think this is, by itself, just the frost light is a great figure. But with all the stuff added on, it's really a toy of the year contender. There's just so much going on, so much articulation, so much just awesomeness in this package. Sure, it adds up. It's a costly piece once you get all the components. But I think in the end, it is worth it. You can check the description below for a link at Shozy Store to find your own. So like always, let us know in the comments below if this is worthy of your collection. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.